But in terms of that 24th pick, a guy, I, two guys um, that I think would be really good, I think would be Maxwell Lewis, Pepperdine guy, ran the DHO, shot off the DHO a lot um, for the waves. And uh, pretty good athlete, long wingspan, could projectably become a good defender. And I feel like he's the type of guy that, you know, people are like, well, he was he was such a good player. But, um, you know, the I think Pepperdine won like 14 games or something like that. They didn't win a lot of games. They might have won less than that, honestly. No, yeah, they won nine games. They went nine and 23. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm hyping up the swells there and uh, for the waves. And, you know, I feel like he's a legit sh- – he, he's going to be able to have a projectable shot. I mean, he shot, I think, 35% from three on about four attempts. And, like, that's not great, but – he was also like ball dominant there. And you feel like if you're having a more of a floor spacer kind of off the bench or something like that, well, now you're all of a sudden talking about more catch and shoot opportunities, which I think in all his catch and shoot opportunities, not just from three, he shot at like 43%. So, you know, that's a guy that could come in and I feel like you get him well coached and whatnot. And you got former Pepperdine waves there in Doug Christie and then on a more younger scale, Kessler Edwards, who will presumably be there. And, uh, you know, I just feel like that's the type of thing where with the athleticism, you get that kind of mentorship. I mean, he would be just a similar, you know, kind of like understanding of certain NBA sets on offense, including the DHO. I just feel like if he's available at 24, and some people have him going a little bit earlier than that. Some people even have him going after that. Um, but kind of in that, 20s range in the draft I think is kind of the consensus on him I really feel like that could be a good pick now I'm afraid I'm highlighting too much of the kind of fit aspect of things there but I mean he offers a lot in terms of upside because he was he was such a good scorer at Pepperdine and I just feel like again you get him in a little bit of a reduced role you get him in a good environment where he's well mentored and you have him develop a little bit. And I feel like in a few years, you might have a starter. So uh, he he could be really good. He could be really, really good. And he's only 20. So yeah. he's the guy that I feel like is is pretty terrific. I mean, any strong strong views out of the 6'7", small forward out of Pepperdine? Um, no, I mean, it is nice that he could probably transition to the Kings game plan fairly easily. And I, I think that's like the most important part. I mean, it's not the most important part, but it's, it's kind of like either, and I guess you can say about, say this about a lot of guys uh, or a lot of draft picks, but I mean, especially, I don't know. It's just so different now with the Kings being, having that 24th pick. It's like, do you get a project or do you get a guy that can transition? Like not immediately, but you can actually make the rotation. And I think that's just Monty's decision right now. It's like, what are you looking for? Do you want a guy that can fill in right away? Or do you want a guy you can kind of put on the back burner, let him develop a little more, and then in a couple of years he can prove to be a guy, a rotational guy? And I just something I'm just not used to, I guess. And I haven't really thought about too much because we're always like trying to get that next big star in the lottery. But it's just a little different this year. So it sounds like he's a guy who can – he kind of sounds like the best of both worlds in that situation where it's like, yeah, he can probably fit – he can fit in next season as well as being a little bit of a project who can be even better in a couple of years. So that's what I kind of like about him. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like in a, in a way you kind of get to that back end and you look at the highest value player. If we want to look at it that way, like best player available, who has, who's the best asset, who has the best value. And it's going to be a lot of guys that are a little bit, maybe more projects. I feel like, you know, you're talking about like uh city Sissoko and like maybe Ryan Rupert, who's another guy I like. I like both of them because they're long and they project, they have shooting projections to be good and really good defenders and versatile and whatnot. And so like, I feel like if either of those guys are available, you might just see McNair take them. But, you know, Maxwell Lewis is a guy that you could make the argument still might have a better roadmap to having a better career. Now, obviously he doesn't have as good well he's still got a seven foot wingspan he's six seven i think he's around 210 pounds 
I mean, he's got a lot of things going for him. He's got good athleticism. So in a lot of ways, yeah, he is a little bit of the best of both worlds. 